Hello, this is Tim Mosley with BetterCloud. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can automate your self-service requests coming from your ITSM tool directly with BetterCloud. Now, when we talk about BetterCloud, one of the things that people have always used us for is the ability to be able to make changes across various endpoints. The fact that BetterCloud maintains a user directory of all of these SaaS users makes it a really convenient place to be able to come in, select a user, and be able to clear out those common help desk tickets. You might find yourself being able to come in here into Better Cloud and to set up things like email delegation for users, you know, or maybe you might need to go into something like Zoom and update a user type to convert somebody into a paid license. And while this is a great and convenient way to be able to make these types of requests, and of course all of these things are kept, you know, audited within Better Cloud. In everybody's march to try and get towards a zero touch model from an IT standpoint, we started to think about ways we could use the platform API here at BetterCloud to be able to automate those service requests as they come directly from that ticketing tool. And so let's go ahead and take a look at one of those particular options here. And in this case, we're going to use Jira as our example. Now what I've done here is created a very simple representation of what a self-service portal might look like as part of your ITSM tool. And some of those common things that you might get requests for end users that you typically would go into BetterCloud to fulfill are things that now you could consider automating directly at the point that the end user is making that request. And so one of the things I mentioned in the previous screen was talking about email delegation. And so rather than having the ticket come into the person in IT and having them go into Better Cloud and make that change, wouldn't it be easier to just go ahead and present a form to that end user and have them fill out the necessary details, the reason for their request, and then you can go ahead and submit that request. Now you could leverage the native approval process in your ITSM tool, or you could leverage the approval process in Better Cloud as well, or you could simply fulfill a request automatically depending on the nature of the request. Now, one of the other things that we hear is a very common thing that people are looking to do is to be able to upgrade those Zoom licenses. And so to be able to enable somebody right there at the point of that service request to be able to go in and make that request to have their license upgraded. Again, something that can just be automated directly out of the ticketing tool itself. So now you're looking at a list of the workflows available in Better Cloud that I've built to support the requests in the self-service portal. And so let's go ahead now and take a closer look at the workflow that I've designed to go ahead and fulfill that license request for Zoom Pro. And so as you start to take a closer look at this particular workflow, you'll see here that I've got a new when statement. And so this is a custom trigger that I created within the platform API within Better Cloud. And so this is that inbound request from the self-service portal for that license request. One of the great things that you can do with the Better Cloud Platform API is when you're passing information into Better Cloud as part of an inbound webhook, is you can make any of those parameters that come across available as if statements, but they can also be used as variables when you start to perform actions downstream in the then section of the workflow. And so in this example, I'm taking that license request from the self-service portal. I'm checking to see what the application that was requested, and then we'll go ahead and start to perform the actions. The first action in this step is really important, and it's another thing that's unique to Better Cloud. And what I'm gonna do here is actually perform a lookup against the database that Better Cloud maintains about those user objects. And what that allows me to be able to do is really enrich the process of this workflow. And so I take the email address that's given to me by the ticketing system, and I look that up against Better Cloud, and that allows me to be able to do things within Better Cloud related to perhaps doing a wait for approval. And so if I'd like to put in a wait for approval and have that person's manager be the person that does that, just like you're familiar with doing with Better Cloud, I can come in and take a look at the results of that first action, which was looking up my user. And if I need to pull their manager to be able to do the approval, I can easily do that from here. Now I can customize the subject of my email and the body, include any of those other parameters, including the application name. And once that approval takes place, then Better Cloud is going to go through and process the command to update that user type. And so we'll go ahead and convert that user from basic to paid. 
And then we've got the opportunity here to even send an email directly out to the requester and let them know that their request has been fulfilled and they can now go ahead and start using that right away. You'll see that I've also included here the ability to actually mark that request as done. And so this sets it up in such a way that I've got an endpoint within JIRA that is listening for commands from BetterCloud. And so in this request, in this case, I can pass back the key for the issue, and then on the back end, that will get automatically marked as done, completing the process. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at the automations within JIRA. The last thing that we looked at within BetterCloud was the workflow that was triggered to be able to upgrade the application type for the requested user. And so let's take a look and see what it looks like on the JIRA side. And so from here, you can see we're just building the simple little automation within JIRA. And so anytime an issue is created, we're going to go ahead and do a check for the summary of that particular request. And so what I've done is just hidden this field within the body of the request. And so it's an easy way for me to be able to target these particular requests for automation within BetterCloud. JIRA then automatically transitions the issue to pending, and then you'll see that we just send a simple web request over to BetterCloud with the contents of the issue. And so that's going to include the requester and the application that they're looking to upgrade. So now let's go ahead and put all of these concepts together. So if we take a look here at the offboarding example that we have in our self-service portal, you see that we're able to collect the information that BetterCloud needs to process the offboarding. And so the first thing that we'll ask for is the email address of the departing employee. But remember that we do have the ability to use any of the parameters that are collected in the form as if statements. And so when you're thinking about building an offboarding example, you may want to go ahead and collect the information that BetterCloud would need to be able to make a very tailored offboarding approach. And so in this case, we'll go ahead and choose the title of that user and then go ahead and specify the particular department that they're in. Again, these are all attributes that will help BetterCloud make a very tailored offboarding. One of the things that we get requests from customers is sometimes they want to be able to have a little bit more flexibility in to whom they're transferring files and calendar events over to. And so you can see here in this request, I've got the ability to actually specify different places to be able to send the information of that departing employee. So we can specify who should receive their files and then if somebody different should receive those calendar events. You'll notice down here that I've also included in my form is the ability to go ahead and specify the end date for that particular employee. All right, and so now we're back in the automations within JIRA. And so let's take a look at a couple of the things that we did to be able to enable this to work. Now in the offboarding request, you'll notice that I had in there an end date. And so we're using a function within JIRA to be able to run a batch job that essentially runs on a predefined schedule that will analyze the tickets that are in the queue. And so in this case, I've written a JQL search to be able to find all of the tickets that are of that particular service request type, in this case an offboarding, and then it's going to analyze the end date that was given in the form, and with it's in a few minutes of the time that the scheduler runs, then it's going to go ahead and transition that issue to pending. And so that's something that will take place just automatically within the ticketing tool itself, where you can start to look for particular parameters and then make a change to the ticket. And so by marking that ticket as pending, that enables me to be able to run my standard offboarding. And so let's take a closer look at this. And so in the previous example, you had seen that I was actually triggering my automations from JIRA based on when the ticket itself was created. Now in this particular case, you're gonna see that it's a little bit different, that what we're gonna do is trigger our offboarding based on the changes to a status. And in this case, the status change is being sent to pending. And so you'll notice on the previous example of that scheduler, the action that took place was marking this request as pending. And so once that scheduler makes that change, then BetterCloud is going to be able to receive the information. And so we pick up the automation from here that the, the status is set to pending. 
And then we're doing our consistent check to make sure that the tag is contained within the ticket that indicates that Better Cloud should be involved. And then once again, you'll see us go ahead and transfer this request over to a work in progress. Now in this particular case, what I have chosen to do is to initially I send out a web request or a trigger to Better Cloud to perform the basic security functions of my offboarding to reset passwords and to lock them out of that account. But when it comes time to be able to determine if the transfer should take place of that employee's files or calendar events, again, we're using the logic within the ticketing system to take a closer look. And so in this particular issue, we look to see if there's an existence of an email address in the field for who the file should be transferred to. And if that is not empty, then it's going to go ahead and fire off a trigger to Better Cloud that will take those parameters that were given in the form and then process the workflow. And then you'll see us do the same thing down here for our calendar events, that if that is not empty, then it'll go ahead and process the command that will fulfill that request. Now if we take a look back into Better Cloud to see the things that are supporting those functions, you can see evidence of that here. And so I've got my standard employee offboarding workflow, but then I've also set up independent workflows to handle those inbound requests for the transfer of calendar events or those Google Drive files. And so you'll see by setting it up in this way that I'm actually able to reuse some of these workflows. So the ability to transfer files in a self-service request could also simply call this same workflow to transfer those files. So with a little bit of pre-thought in the way that you set this up, you can set up a very scalable solution to be able to automatically fulfill all of these requests directly from that self-service portal, leveraging the extensive API library within Better Cloud. I hope you enjoyed learning how you can automate your ITSM self-service portal with Better Cloud.